Hey Pyro, I had several Pyros reach out to me about burning gourds and I realized I never did post my video about burning gourds and the 10 things that I learned when I first did it. So I wanna share that with you now so that it can help you to avoid the mistakes that I made on my first gourd. If you're new here, I'm Jani Lizenby, your pyro professor from burnsavvy.com and Burn Savvy Academy, where you can get all kinds of free wood burning information, courses, retreats, all kinds of things in person and online. And I'm here to help you burn like a boss. Let's burn. <laughs> Number one is that you actually don't need to sand the surface of a gourd. Once it's been cleaned, you really don't need to prepare it anymore. It's already been prepared. If you sand it, actually there's a lighter color underneath the skin. And if you sand the gourd, that's actually going to show through. So unless you want the white to show through, don't sand your gourd, okay? Number two. If the gourd is big enough, you actually don't need to prop your hand up on anything. Typically when I'm burning things, I like to prop my hand up to the surface that I'm burning. So if my surface is four inches tall, I'll find something else four inches tall to rest my hand on. But with the gourd, if it's big enough, I can turn it in such a way that I can actually rest my hand on the gourd itself. And then I can keep burning. I don't actually need anything else to prop my hand on. Number three. The top layer of the gourd, the one where I said it's yellow and then underneath it is white, right? The very top layer, that yellow layer, is very, very thin. Under that layer feels much more like styrofoam. And the styrofoam part, to me, felt like it melted faster than the upper protective surface. And it feels like it's really easy to burn holes through it if you want it. Or if you didn't want and you just weren't careful. So just make sure that you are being careful when you are past that upper protective surface, if you burn underneath it, it might burn faster. The fourth thing I learned is round surfaces are tricky, but it was even more tricky to get it to hold still on the table. <laughs> so aside from burning the round surface, you need something to actually hold it stable on the table. If you rest your hand on the gourd, it wants to just squirrel itself right off the table, right? And I found that bean bags propped up underneath it were really good for holding it in place. And it was really easy if I needed to turn the gourd, I could do that fairly easily, fairly quickly without moving too much or too much trouble on my end. And that was super helpful. Number five, gourds like a higher heat. Just like any surface you never want to press hard and if you press too hard on one of these uh, i mean if it doesn't break your tool you might burn a hole <laughs> through the gourd it's kind of thin but it does like a higher heat so slow down or turn up that heat number six shading on a gourd is more difficult than shading on wood. At least in my experience, it was. It took a lot more effort. And so in the end, I decided to mostly stick with the line art, but it can be done. Just understand that it might take a lot more effort and it might take a lot more time. Number seven, gourds are less forgiving than wood. <laughs> If you make a mistake on wood, you can use sandpaper, you can use a knife, a razor blade, you can use a chisel. These are all things that I use. But on a gourd, you can't just chisel it off. Like I said before, since the surface color is different than what's just barely underneath it, that white, then all of that sanding would reveal your mistake. All the chiseling would probably gouge straight through the gourd. So really, it's best if you make a mistake to just keep burning and find a way to blend that in. Number eight, if the part that you burned gets too thick, like you have too thick of a layer of carbon or ash that you have burned, it can flake off. 
once it flakes off, that can sometimes leave the white under surface revealed. Now that could look really cool if you carved it to be revealed, but the flaking burns don't look on purpose. So I know it takes a higher heat, but try to keep it on the lower end of that high, if that makes sense. <laughs> try not to burn too hot. Find a balance. Number nine, gourds are very smoky. With these, I would highly recommend that you use a mask and lots of ventilation or even do it outside if you can. It was just, it was very smoky. I also like to use my carbon filter fan. That is a big help. I can leave links to my carbon filter mask and my carbon filter fans in the description for you so you can find exactly what I use or find something that suits you better, but at least it'll give you a starting point to go from. Number 10, a gourd needs a different kind of finish or sealant than wood does. Now, this was going to be a birdhouse outside, so I wanted to make sure that this was going to be protected in the best way possible because I know that UV light can fade a burn pretty fast. So you really wanna protect it, especially if it's outside. And what I learned from my friend is that the pro gourd artists use natural shoe polish. And again, I can link to that for you in the description. I have burned more gourds since then, and I will be posting a few time lapses of some of the gourds that I have done just for your viewing entertainment. So be watching for those. Now, if you have burned gourds before, I would love to hear in the comments any extra tips that you have to share with other people who are just burning their first gourd for the first time. And if you've never burned a gourd before, I would love to hear in the comments what tip you think is going to help you the most or what tip has helped you the most. And if they were helpful, please hit the like button. And then if you want more wood burning tips and suggestions and projects, please subscribe to this channel. You can also subscribe to my email list over at burnsavvy.com. That's where I share lots of free wood burning information. I have wood burning courses available for you. I also do wood burning retreats. So check back to the website for all the events, all of the fun things that we do, some online, some in person. I'm Jani Lizenby, your pyro professor, and I'm here to help you burn like a boss. Later, Pyro. Helpful. Wow. Don't fly.